In this video, I want to discuss Daniel chapter 2, chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, and give you my, my take on these chapters to begin with. It has already happened. We're not sitting around waiting for God's kingdom to come to us. God's kingdom is here and it's now. If you will look at Daniel chapter 2, at the end of chapter uh, 2, when he has mentioned all of these other kingdoms, and, and look at them, they are in succession. They're not contemporary kings. You have, you have Babylon, then you have Medo-Persia, then you have the Grecian Empire. All of these, all of these kingdoms are mission, mentioned in succession and are not contemporaries. But too many people, again, fail to over, overlook. There's a fifth kingdom mentioned here that is going to be established to me in succession as well. Why should God give us all of these others in succession? And all of a sudden we want to jump to thousands of years out into the future for the fifth kingdom to be established when all the others come in succession. And in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, it says this, And in the days of those kings, what kings are we talking about? These successive kingdoms. In the days of those kings, the, the God of heaven <clears throat> will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. That kingdom will be be left to will not be left to another people. It will crush and, and put an end to all these kingdoms, but it itself will endure forever. Daniel chapter seven, uh, at the end of chapter seven, says pretty much the same thing about God establishing establishing His kingdom that will be forever. Once again, in Daniel chapter seven, after giving those kings in succession, why should I all of a sudden jump two thousand years out into the future? as though God's kingdom should not follow in succession as well. So it is my contention that Daniel chapter 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 ended before our own 70 A.D. and that God's kingdom was established at the death of Jesus Christ. We're not sitting around waiting on God's kingdom to come to us. We are already living in God's kingdom today. Now, we are waiting for the consummation of that kingdom when God will come back for all of us, but we're not no longer waiting on his kingdom to come to us. We're living in, in, in the midst of God's kingdom today, and his people should be living like people of that kingdom in a way that is pleasing to God. Uh, again, to try to spiritualize these chapters and jump thousands of years into the future, when historically you can look at, especially chapter 8, 9, 10, and 11, historically, you can look and pinpoint those things as to an actual time they begin and to an actual time in which they ended. Isn't, isn't, there's nothing in those chapters that suggests something 2,000 years down the road or 1,800 years down the road. It is given the historical events as they took place uh, shortly after Daniel, especially on, on chapter 8, uh, uh, shortly after Daniel uh, dealing with Antiochus Epiphanes, the little horn of the Grecian Empire. And all of a sudden, you know, why do you want to come in here and start spiritualizing things have you symbolized other things it, it, the only reason a person could do that is to, is to fit some prophetic agenda they have and there are people talking about Daniel chapter 9 you know where where 480 uh, three years ended it or 69 weeks ended with Jesus and all of a sudden there's some big gap period there now we're living in the church age I want you to look at some of these videos of people dealing with the church age who give absolutely no historical context to what they're saying they have no reasoning for believing there is some gap period in Daniel's prophecy and that all of a sudden we're living in a church age now. Uh, in fact, that theory, as far as I know, did, didn't even start until about the, the uh, 1800s or so, 1820, 1830, somewhere along in there, is when all of that stuff began to surface and people just built on it from then. Uh, there is no gap period in, uh, in Daniel's prophecy and, and people who do that are just simply guessing is all they're doing. They have read what somebody else said rather than doing any research on their own, any competent Bible study on their own. They jumped out there and picked up on what somebody else said without doing any research whatsoever. And the text of Daniel chapter 9, in fact these other chapters as well, does not lend itself to some 2,000 or 3,000 years down the road when Christ uh, established the kingdom of God at Calvary. And when he did that, the kingdom that was everlasting as Daniel chapter 2 points out, and as Daniel chapter 7 points out, God established his everlasting kingdom then and there. And we're living in the kingdom of God in this present world.
We're only waiting for the consummation of that kingdom to take place when Jesus returns. I will be glad to take your questions on this, and I know that some of you probably have some questions, and uh, believe me, I do have some answers for you. I can anticipate some of your questions now, and I hope you will ask me. In fact, I might have to come back and do another video later, and I'll be glad to do that as well. But I anticipate your questions, and I look forward to your questions uh, as to why I arrive at the conclusion that we're living in God's kingdom and that the prophecies of Daniel have completed by at least 70 A.D. Until next time, this has been Golly saying God bless.